In this video, what I would like to do is to review how satiety and satiation is regulated. Before I get into it, though, um, I need to just go over with you the learning objectives for this. There's a lot of details in here. I want to make sure that you know what's important. So first of all, we're going to talk about the difference between satiety, satiation, hunger, and appetite. And all of these um, seem related, but they have very uh, precise meanings. It turns out that they're regulated differently. Um, I want you to know how your brain um, gives, takes the information about what's going on in your digestive system and turns it into information um, that your brain uses that actually controls your behavior. I want you to know where those signals come from in the body because it actually um, plays a role in how they're regulated. And I want you to know what dietary factors initiate those signals. In other words, what are they responding to exactly? Um, and the reason that all of where all this is going to come together is if you know this material, um, you can think like your body does and use these facts to um, influence um, the amount of food that you eat at a given meal and to um, influence the amount of time between meals before you get hungry again. So let's start by talking about these terms, satiation, satiety, hunger, and appetite. So um, we all go through this cycle uh, several times a day between being hungry, being full, and being somewhere in between. So let's start with when it is that you're feeling like you're really hungry. Okay, that sensation um, is called hunger. It actually starts, though, earlier. Uh, many times you, somebody will ask you, could you eat? And you think about it and you'll say, no, I'm not interested. Or maybe there comes a time when you say, I could see eating in maybe 30 minutes. All right. So there is a point in time, there's a gradation. When we're just beginning to get hungry, that is the end of um, beginning of the end of the satiety cycle. Um, and, but then you know that you can put off eating for quite a while. Um, of course, if there's no food available, there's nothing you can do about that. But sometimes you can delay eating until it gets to that point where your stomach is actually contracting. Um, that's actually sort of an advanced hunger symbol. Um, Ultimately, if you ignore the hunger symbol enough, then those sensations will stop and abate. Um, so, um, but hunger is um, peaks at a certain point, and usually that's when we start to eat. So, satiation is the next hap thing that happens after you eat. Satiation is the sensation I'm full. And when you look at um, how much food you eat, where uh, the volume of food that you eat in a day, um, the amount of food that you eat in a setting um, is a measure of your satiation. Sometimes um, when you're eating, you can eat for a while and you say I'm full but you can still pick up the food a little bit but then there comes a point where somebody tries to tempt you with something and you just roll your eyes and say absolutely no way so even with satiation um, there is a level above which we can go and actually between that first sensation of I'm full that is the satiation signal but we can override that to some extent um, because of social things um, or because the food tastes really good. So sometimes we can eat more than we really should. Um, we overeat. 
And that ability to eat more, to eat past the uh, satiation signal, is appetite. And that's controlled mainly by social factors um, and psychological factors. So satiety is the other main measure of eating frequency, and this is the main regulation. So um, satiety is the amount of time between when you're full, you have the satiation signal, and when you start to get hungry again. Between that time, your sensation is one where you're just not really thinking of food. Maybe immediately after this, you're feeling kind of bloated and gross, but uh, eventually you reach that happy medium where you're just going about your business, not really thinking of food anymore. All right, so the measure of how much time elapses between that varies. And this um, is, the, um, is one of the factors that's regulated. Um, and it's regulated differently than the satiation signal. All right, so what controls our feeding behavior ultimately is our brain. The part of our brain that regulates feeding is one of the most ancient parts of our brain. Um, and there's two regions in the hypothalamus that are separate. One region is our hunger center. And when it's stimulated, we feel hunger and we eat. Their separate center is our um, satiation um, center. And when that is stimulated, then we stop eating our satiety center. So then the next question is, well, what stimulates those centers? And all of that comes from a complex interplay of over 50 chemical signals, chemical and physical signals in the body. It turns out to be very complicated and a lot of it is not really, is on, an area of ongoing research. So in this figure what they've done is they've taken those green and red areas here and, um, and there they are here. These two green and red centers send out different signaling hormones themselves, which we're not going to really talk to because we're, we're really more interested in what regulates those signals in the first place rather than what the body does with it. So that's what these green and red are. Um, so yeah, let's just look through here at all of the factors. So the green arrows show the factors that stimulate feeding, okay? And they are ghrelin and some mechano and chemoreceptors that are um, secreted um, by the, or that are activated, that are located in the stomach. Um, and then the factors which inhibit feeding are insulin, more of these mechano and chemoreceptors, leptin, and this um, hormone called the PYY hormone. Now in these figures, you'll see that it looks like it comes from the uh, small intestine, but in fact, the highest concentration of the PYY hormones, which is the only one that we're gonna focus on here, is actually found in the large intestine. Okay, so just try to move that arrow over there. All right, so let's go through each one of these in turn. And in, I'm going to talk about them in the two stages. We're going to start about talking about what factors regulate satiation and what factors regulate satiety. All right, so satiation is regulated primarily by signals that come from um, the digestive tract. Um, the stomach um, has these um, stretch receptors um, and the liver also releases CCK and GLP-1, which we're not going to really talk about that much. So these here are the main satiation signals. 
um, the in addition to that, um, there is sort of like an overlying layer of regulation, and those are the adiposity signals. And they are leptin and insulin. There's a third level of regulation where the nutrients that are in the bloodstream sort of bathe the center in the brain directly. So that sort of um, is a um, extra level of regulation. So the way that it works is that when your stomach is full, there are receptors on your stomach that fire signals to the um, brain um, that say the stomach is full. And that stops the feeding, that inhibits feeding by activating um, the red center. Okay, so um, you can stop eating by eating a larger volume. The um, CCK and GLP-1 factors are released in proportion to the content of these particular macronutrients, fat and protein. So if you eat a high fat or and high protein meal, that causes the release of these hormones which are needed for their absorption and digestion. And that in turn um, causes you to be full. Um, the glucose and fatty acids that come from the meal um, bathe the brain and it takes about 30 minutes um, f at minimum for the food to go from your stomach into the small intestine. Remember that it's in the small intestine that the glucose and the fatty acids um, are absorbed. So that's sort of a 30 minute timer between the time that the food enters the stomach and goes into the bloodstream. And then in addition, leptin levels, which is that layer of regulation I was telling you about, will tell you how much fat you already have stored in your adipose tissue. The more fat you have, the higher the leptin levels. And then finally, the sight, taste, and smell um, can override it. And it can also cause you to eat more quickly um, if the, the food is really good. Um, and so that can also affect satiation. So how can you take that information about how satiation works and modify the diet to take advantage of it? We're going to start from the point of view of assuming that what you want to do is to increase satiation. In other words, to reduce the amount of food that you eat at a given meal. Um, so to take advantage of the fact that the volume activates the stretch receptors, you just can't get around the fact that eating a bigger meal makes your stomach full. Um, but if you take advantage of the fact that fiber has no calories but occupies a large volume, foods that are high in fiber are natural, um, are ways to fill your stomach without actually contributing calories. Another trick that you can use is knowledge that the foods that are in liquid form leave the stomach faster. Um, but if you put take those liquids and you add fiber to it, say by um, cooking vegetables in it, um, then or by adding um, fats or proteins to it, um, the and that's essentially what soups are. Soups can distend your stomach um, and the liquids will actually be trapped by the fiber. So it works out that solid fiber, high fiber foods um, can be less filling than soup because the liquid 
is absorbed by the fibers so it doesn't pass into the small intestine. However, if you have foods that are low fiber, high carbohydrate, those go right through your stomach and they don't fill you up at all. And that's the story with the uh, sugar sweetened uh, soft drinks. They have calories in them, but they don't fill you up. Um, these hormones here, CCK and GLP-1, are released in proportion to fat and protein content in the meal. So eating a high protein meal um, will cause you to get fuller faster. Same with high fat, because it takes a long time for f high fat foods to leave the stomach. But once again, high fat is high calorie, and so that um, is actually counterproductive to increasing satiation without increasing caloric content. The chemical signals that come from fat levels um, you can't really do anything about, and the ghrelin signals um, come immediately after food passes into your stomach. Um, and the, the, it takes a certain amount of time for those signals to reach your brain um, because this is a hormone, it's not nerve related. Um, so there's not much that you can do about that time span. Um, but one thing that you can do is to take advantage of the fact that um, when your blood glucose levels and fatty acid levels are high, that that itself will decrease your appetite. And so to do that, you could just top off your stomach on a regular basis, um, thereby passing food past this ghrelin continuously. In addition, um, if you prevent your blood glucose levels from dropping, then it will um, reduce, you can get away with eating small meals and feeling full by tricking your body into thinking that you've just had a big meal. All right, so now let's turn to satiety. And when we're talking about satiety, you're going to see a lot of the same players. You've got um, ghrelin and you've got leptin, um, but you've also got two other hormones, insulin and the PYY, um, which only come into play once the food leaves the stomach. Okay, so let's the way let's track that by just following what happens to the hormone levels as the food progresses down the stomach. So starting once again um, with when you're unfed, um, ghrelin levels are high and ghrelin levels are stimulating you to feed and the two hormones which inhibit, um, which inhibit feeding, we're not going to talk about leptin just now, um, are insulin and the PYY and they are not produced because they are stimulated um, by factors that only come into play after the food has gone into the lower digestive tract. So these would inhibit hunger, but they're not being made. Um, and so the result is that you are hungry. All right, so then once you eat, um, you put some food in your stomach, and that causes the ghrelin levels to drop because of the passage of the food. So you've got the absence of this appetite stimulation factor. And the result is satiation. Okay, next it moves into the small intestine. In the small intestine, um, well, first of all, what happens is because your stomach is empty, this, it's now been about 30 minutes or later, later, and so your ghrelin levels are back up again. And the ghrelin levels would stimulate your hunger, except that now insulin levels are starting to go up. So the food leaves your stomach, it goes into the small intestine, and depending on the glycemic index, 
either one hour later, four hour later, something like that, the um, glucose gets into your bloodstream um, and you start, um, so you start making um, insulin. And so this insulin overrides the ghrelin signal and the effect is that you feel neither hungry nor full. You're just sort of pretty, pretty happy. All right, so then after it moves out of the small intestine, it moves into the large intestine. Okay, this is where this final factor, PYY, comes to play. So PYY is made in the large intestine and it's stimulated by uh, the presence of food. Um, they're not really sure what um, stimulates it in particular, but one thing that does appear to affect it is protein. So if you have high protein in your stool, um, that is something that boosts your PYY. So um, this inhibitory factor now um, replaces insulin. Insulin levels are dropping because after about four hours, your blood glucose levels are starting to drop. Now, four to 16 hours later, this is the part where the food has left your uh, colon, depending on how often you um, eliminate. So um, now the signal from PYY is gone. Your lower intestine is empty. And so that removes that inhibitory factor. You are fasting because it's been a long time since you've had a meal. So insulin levels go way, way down. And that leaves, once again, your ghrelin levels high. And so the result is that you're ready to eat. So what can we do to modulate satiety? Once again, the key is delaying the progression of the food through the digestive system. So as we watch those signals, a lot of them had to do with keeping the blood glucose levels high. All right, so you want to avoid fasting. And anything that keeps the food in the digestive system longer will also continue to give you those I'm full signals that counteract the fact that your stomach is empty. Um, one thing that you might notice is um, protein in the diet that's in the stool stimulates PYY secretion. And so if you eat a high protein diet, hypothetically, if the amount of protein that is in your diet is higher than what you eat, that could um, dampen um, satiety, but it still would um, not be a factor once you eliminate it. All right, so what I'd like for you to do now is to just look through these learning objectives and go back and look at the slides um, and um, review it and make sure that you know all of these things before you take the quiz.